Hello and welcome to this tutorial about how to create, uh, how to render out UDM tiles um, textures in Houdini. So if you look at this uh, at the UVs, you can see I have eight tiles, and I'm going to show you how to load them all in at, at render time. So let's import a model first, and it's I've uh, I'm gonna include uh, this model in the tutorial also as a file and if you press space 5 you can see UVs as you can see I have 8 tiles yes all right and first thing what we, oh wait uh, I also got textures I've just downloaded uh, six of them of them from my uh, CG textures some of them are tradable, but this one isn't, but it doesn't really matter. If you have a model with UDAM uh, textures in Ma from Mari, it shouldn't be a problem. And also, before we start, you should uh, go to Google or Bing, I don't know what you use. And if you type UDAM, the first hit should be a ben, ben Neal's blog. And he's explaining what UDAM is. It's quite useful to know what, what all, all of this is. And you can see he has included some uh, formulas. And we're gonna create this one. So you can see 1000 plus u plus 1 plus v times 10. And that's actually the core of this uh, video, how to do that in Houdini. So first, drop down a flop stop. And let's dive inside of it. And let's go full screen on this this screen. And you can press this button, or press Control B or Command B on the Mac. And we we don't need the globals, so let's import the UVs first. If you press P, P, you can see the parameters. And if you're not in full screen, you see the parameters here. And P is just an easy way to to see parameters in this view. So type in UVs over here. So we should have the UVs now. And if you do vector to float and connect uh, this node there, uh, this should be the U, this should be the V, and this should be W, but we don't have 3D UVs, but that's. Uh, for something else, I don't know. Never used it actually. And let's drop down new attribute. So if you type down add attribute, and let's name this UDIM, and in the local variable name, should this one should be the same as this one, but done in caps only. And this one should be an integer. So this one is a float. We need to convert this to an integer. I'm not going to use a float to integer straight away, but first I'm going to floor this value, so it's rounding down, and I will explain in a second why that is. So if I go to the UV view, you can see this one should be in the zero zone, so uh, 0 0.9 should be right here, a value of 0 0.9. And it's getting round down to zero. And this is what I want. And this one should get around to one, two, until eight. And if I go to the details view, let's dive one node up. You can see UDIM is rounding down to three. I think this one also rounds it down to three, but I like to play safe and use this one. So let's see. So now we have the values for the U. And now we also need the values for the V. So copy paste this one, like I did. And now we have values for the V. Now we can add them together. And let's go back to this website. And we we need to add one to the u and multiply the v times ten. 
So let's do that in ODB. Okay. Just add a constant to the U. Press P and it should add one. And use multiply add constant. On the V should uh, be 10. And the last thing we need is the thousand. So add thousand to this whole thing. So let's drop down a constant. Remember to check this one on integer and add it to the add node and put in a value of thousand. Let's go back and let's see what we have in the details view. UDIM should be one to to uh, should be correct now if I sort them. Thousand one two thousand eight. This is correct. Also, if you don't have this details view, just add the plus button and go and add uh, this panel over here. So what's next? All right, just uh, we're gonna add a material over here. I'm gonna create a material, my own material first. So, uh, the the VOP material, the mantras, I don't know what it's called. A material shader builder is called. So let's dive inside this one and go full screen. We don't need the globals for now. Well, let's move them aside. Now we just delete them. Okay, um, first we need to add a texture node. And yes, let's use a surface model. This is the actual shader part. So let's connect uh, these three nodes. The normal should uh, be, you should get that on from the globals, but let's leave it for now. And attach the color to the fuse color. Okay. Next thing what we should do is look at this value. If you press P, you can see we have a texture map here. You could promote this. I'm going to do that. And let's go one level up. Okay, we have a texture map over here now. So if you go to hip, textures, and load in the first UDIM, you might think you could do this. And if I create a camera, this control click, and then it's creating a camera from the current view, lock it, and let's take a look over here. And let's add a skylight and start the camera and render. It's not working. Oh, of course, I didn't assign the material yet. Let's do that. And it's not working. Uh, and I will show you why. That is because uh, at render time it can't use uh, local variables if the uh, from the model. You have to assign them in shader mode, in shader level. So let's dive back inside the shader, press Ctrl B, and press P again for the parameters. And we need to override this part, the map. So we're going to delete it. Uh, no, just set it to invisible because if we go level up and Ctrl B again. Now it's not that you can't see a texture over here again. So let's dive back inside this one. Okay. Let's go back to the VOP shop over here. And let's create an attribute to create. 
I'm gonna leave the viewport at the details view so you can see what's happening. So you could type in here map and uh, set the type to integer, no, sorry, string, and the point to primitive. And if we were to get the path from the texture, so let me see, uh, let me type it down, huh? slash hip textures slash I think it was test JPEG. Let me check again just to be sure. Yes, so this is my path. UDM tutorial. This one is called hip over here, and it is called test 1001. And I have a folder called the texture, so this should be correct. So if we go to the uh, render view. Press render. You can see it loaded the texture in, which is correct. So if I change this one to 2002, it uses this texture. And if I, it, it, uh, it, this, one, this path, this string allows local variables now, so we can use UDIM. And you can see it loaded all in all textures, but there's one problem with the texture. So let's remove the preview. And I'm going to add a camera over here, the scene view. So I can navigate and render at the same time. Use the camera and lock it down. So you can see it's styling the UVs, which is not correct. And to fix that, we're going back to the shop level, shop network, and we should enter the UVs over here because this one uses the standard S and T coordinates. So we use uh, UV chord. We can't use the, the S and T because those are uh, parametric UVs. So let's use a vector to float. And use the first two channels and if you can see if you look at it here let's turn back to preview and go to the scene view all materials are assigned corresponding to the UDIM number this is what we want there's a few things I also want to tell you so if you you can use this also for the band map just exactly the same way, but if you, for example, have already have a material like the mantra surface uh, shader, the basic one. Let's see. Uh, over here is the diffuse. This one is called base color map. Since I paused the video, I already typed in base color map over here, so we used to have map. If you press render, it should still, uh, well, it's not working, because I already assigned the mantra surface also when I paused the video. So this is the old material we made a few seconds ago. So if I would connect the mantra surface, you should take in account that the texture map is called differently. It's called base color map. And you should actually make it invisible because we were assigning, assigning textures uh, externally now. So I'm going to make this invisible. And I'm going to call this the base color map. And if I'm correct, we should also use the color map for it to work, as you can see. This one, the same thing goes for the displacement. If you wanted to use the displacement map, you have to find the name here. Or, actually, you can hover over this value 
is called displacement map. So let's actually do that. This one does not use. Uh, this one does not include any displacement map. So it is working, but it's looking really weird. Let's zoom in. As you can see, it's quite weird. But if I, well, I could do two things. I could duplicate this node or this parameter. If I use this plus sign, I have to type everything down again, which is not a real problem, but you can also duplicate this attribute and change this to the space map. I should get some weird results. But it is working as you uh, can see. 